move to our third presentation by Isabella uh, Carsnia. Oh, you are here. Yeah. That. Isabella um, is from University of Warsaw Department of Geoinformatics, and she does have uh, two co-authors from other country, from uh, University of Zurich, Switzerland, and University of Colorado Boulder, USA. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, today, I would like to share with you the first results of the project that has been conducted um, as Angela said, in international cooperation. Uh, I'm very glad uh, because of the first presentation, because that also considered uh, map generalization, so I don't have to explain it that much detail, um, but I'd like to bring us from the raster mode to more vector ones. Um, so today I would like to share some first results of the project concerning automatic settlement selection for small scale maps uh, using the selected machine learning models. Um, I said I don't, uh, don't have to explain that anymore, but there are some things that should be highlighted in here. Uh, what, we were, what we are working on is to make the selection process more efficient. Um, and what we are um, very concerned about is to put into this process of machine learning, so into automatic process, as much as um, as much cartographic knowledge as we can uh, just to make the process um, better and more proper from the cartographic perspective so what we want to do is to achieve automatically uh, something that is as close as similar as possible to uh, what a cartographer would do in terms of settlement selection uh, our motivation is also um, driven by the fact that there exist some solutions, of course, a lot of them, especially for large scale maps. Thus, we would we concentrate on small scales, uh, geographical scales. Uh, what is more, as you could see from the first presentation, there exist lots of interesting solutions for raster mode. While we want to um, deal with um, the vector mode, with, with, the, with the vector databases that we have, uh, especially in Poland, but further we want to move to the US and also to Switzerland. Um, there exists, of course, the software that supports supports map generalization. There exists lots of interesting tools. However, I must say that while we're looking at it, we also come to the conclusion that most of those tools um, in the standards um, uh, software that is supporting map generalization is rather foreseen also for large scale maps, probably because of this load of research concerning um, large scale maps generalization. We work, uh, the work that I'm showing today concerns Poland. Uh, that's why we have the map of Poland here. Um, we were working on uh, four groups of districts. These are the administrative regions that we have in Poland. The, the districts that are uh, colored in white were taken into consideration because of the time constraint. I will concentrate on only on two groups, but the mm, most diverse one. So I will show the results for um, the groups, the one district group that is highly populated and has also um, high settlement density, because this is also something that we considered. And also the other group that is very low populated with low population um, density. But as you can see, based on this map, we tried to, for this first try, for this first attempt, we tried to select, um, even in Poland, uh, the districts uh, with dif different nature in terms of how the uh, settlement structure looks like. Uh, so the scope of uh, the research was to implement selected machine learning models. We had some experience from a few years back when we got very interesting results. Uh, but now we wanted uh, especially to test um, mod the, the different models um, to compare them among each other and to see which one would be the best performing one. So which one will be the most similar? Uh, to um, the paper map, which was our reference. So like the example of the proper generalization. Uh, and because especially recently we can see that the especially machine learning and especially deep learning has been even called um, 
a new paradigm for map generalization, we also wanted to try this technique and check um, how it will uh, how it will perform. Uh, so um, we have compared the models. Um, um, among them, and we also validated against the selection status acquired from the Atlas map, so our reference. And uh, we started from general geographic database, object database, which is being built for Poland and is being kept up to date all the time. Uh, this database um, is at the detail level of one to 250,000. And what we wanted to achieve in this experiment was to um, select settlements automatically with the use of these uh, machine learning models to one to 500,000 scale, as this is the scale that Polish National Mapping Agency is also interested a lot. Um, we, uh, when we started the work um, a few years back already, um, we come across one trouble, which is a common trouble, uh, as I can see, through different national mapping agencies, not only in Europe, that the um, contemporary databases are very rich in terms of geometry. However, they lack uh, the semantics, uh, so they lack the thematic, um, while very important, attributes for the features, for the objects, so um, particular for the settlements. That's why we had to do some data enrichment. Uh, we kept that off also automatically. Uh, we used Python language to auto automatically enrich our settlement layer with additional information, uh, especially the information that a cartographer, experienced cartographer, would take into consideration while selecting um, settlements. Uh, this is the, uh, the schema of the research methodology. So basically what I explained, we have selected diverse um, districts, uh, we uh, fed, fed our source database with some additional important information of spatial and semantic nature, and we uh, used these um, machine learning models, and then we validated uh, the results. Uh, what is also quite interesting, but uh, a bit troublesome, uh, that in Poland, we have the map uh, generalization guidelines, actually the map design guidelines, which are prepared by the National Mapping Agency. However, similarly to the source database, they are not very um, rich. Uh, I mean, they are because they are like 600 page, page uh, is there. However, um, as a cartographers, you probably, and GIS people, you probably know that it's very hard to describe uh, very wide cartographic knowledge at, and put it into one document. And that's the case as well in Poland. So in this both in this document and the day and is the source databases, only these kind of variables existed uh, previously before this data enrichment. Mm, population, which is of course the key factor, administra administrative status, settlement type, according to semantic variables, and only one spatial variable was considered in this documentation. Uh, that was population density per, per district, which is um, definitely not enough because that cannot differentiate um, the settlements within a district, only on the district basis. And uh, in Poland, just to let you know, we have around from 100 to 300 settlements in one district. So, um, so uh, that's why we uh, decided to enrich the source database. Uh, we did it also automatically, as I said, um, and we um, asked uh, experienced cartographers, um, more experienced than me, uh, what kind of variables would be useful. We also have taken a look, of course, at the paper maps, and we ended up with a list of additional variables. These are only the variables that considered the semantics. But as you may see, they were also, uh, we have also considered the relations um, between the um, thematic layers, which is also very important. So especially the relations between settlements and road network. In terms of spatial variables, there was only one variable that was named in this official map guidelines, but that's obviously not enough. That's why we have uh, calculated other more um, sophisticated variables um, in order to model the uh, relations within this settlement layer, but also um, in, model in order to model the density, for instance, here with the use of area of Voronoi diagrams. 
And we also uh, characterize the density of settlements and also population density in smaller areas than a district because uh, we wanted to have a look and have the have a look at the um, local density. It appeared that that was actually a very good idea uh, because we got the results, um, very good results with uh, each of these models. As you can see, um, here we have the overall accuracy, but I, I would rather call that kind of agreement between the paper maps and um, the results, because that's not accuracy in the sense um, uh, that we used to say, that's more of a similarity or the agreement be before, um, between them. Uh, as you can see, the agreement was best for random forest, so the model that was uh, mentioned in the presentation just before me, but also for uh, deep learning and um, decision trees with the genetic algorithms and decision trees, uh, the results are quite high. Also, the um, F1 score is um, actually quite, um, quite high. Uh, we have used, uh, as you may see, we have used two kinds of uh, machine learning models. The one that um, are kind of black box, like deep learning, if you will. And we also tested the um, classical, I would say, machine learning models, so decision trees and decision trees supported with the genetic algorithms because they um, they are seen in the literature as not the one that performs very well. However, they have another feature, another characteristic, which is quite important, for instance, um, from the point of view of National Mapping Agency and the cartographer, that they can actually show us the decision, how the decision was taken uh, with the use of these models. Another interesting outcome that we um, achieved with the use of machine learning model is the uh, attribute variables um, weights. So we could basically see, based on the learning process, which of them are the most important. Um, as you can see, there are more than just the population, right? So um, it seems that this data enrichment process was a really good decision. Uh, I mentioned that once we are using decision trees, uh, even if we support them with the genetic algorithms, um, the results are not very uh, impressive in terms of performance, in terms of this agreement. But the nice uh, thing about using um, the white box tools and white box machine learning model is that we can basically follow the decision taken by the models. So we can even read the generalization rules from the decision trees, and that's quite important, especially if they should uh, supplement the existing rules um, contained in the map uh, design guidelines. Of course, the numbers are very important, the accuracies, the agreements, but for a cartographer, um, the crucial uh, thing is to look at the map, how it looks like on the map. Mm, that's why we have um, visualized it mm, on the uh, on the A um, figure. You can see the source data, so General Geographic Object Database. B is the Atlas map, so the map that was designed by an experienced cartographer. This was our reference, like an example of the proper generalization. And below uh, on C, D, E, and F, you can see the results of automatic generalization with the use of machine learning models. Uh, I should mention that the roads were not generalized, they were only uh, shown here um, to inspect the, the relations between settlements and road network. Of course, you can also see in here the trouble that we have, uh, that the General Geographic Object Database is the mm, up-to-date mm, database that is being actualized um, almost in real time, while the, our reference material, so Atlas map uh, is from 1997 so because we needed the material that will cover the whole area of Poland. So as we could have some um, some districts uh, that will be visualized um, everywhere and also that would be visualized by the same person to be more standardized. Uh, that was the group uh, previously uh, highly populated. This is the group um, with lower population density and lower settlement density. Okay. Um, 
And basically in here we can see that the, the solely decision tree didn't work very well because um, um, and um, as well uh, as random forest and deep learning, the best, the closest to the Atlas reference map in this case would be decision tree with genetic algorithms. So um, in terms of uh, model comparison among each other, we could see that the difference between the best and least performing, so this kind of agreement with reference map uh, model was um, around 5%. Um, in case of highly populated uh, districts, so there, when we had um, high density and also settlement, high, quite high settlement density, uh, random forest and deep learning provided the best results. They were the closest to the Atlas map. Um, as I mentioned, decision trees and decision trees supported with the genetic algorithms um, didn't gave didn't give us the very high performance results but as you can see from the table they were quite close to these best performing models but then we got the um, explicit decision process um, we could see also uh, the most important variables and um, as a closing remark almost closing I'd like to say that we uh, got very high accuracies, even if these two data sets uh, were prepared, designed in different times, we still uh, have very uh, good uh, solutions. They are standardized, they are more objective than something that would be prepared by different cartographers. And uh, I can say that our goal to get automatically something as close as possible to the mm, manual map design has almost been uh, achieved because we can do better and we'll do that in uh, the future. Uh, what is also quite important for the future, we want to engage cartographers, experienced cartographers uh, to this learning process a little bit more. So not only the maps, but also we, we want to get some expert cartographic knowledge and we want them to inspect uh, the results afterwards. So we think about some user study experiments to um, to actually get some uh, knowledge and some evaluation help from them. Uh, this is only the first year all the pro of the project and this is the Polish team involved. Uh, we have, I have two PhD students and one investigator and I really appreciate the help from Rob Weibel, Stefan Laik and Arzu Czoltegin uh, from, the, um, from the university that was mentioned in here. Thank you very much and sorry for being a little bit too long. If you have any questions, I'm really happy to answer them. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Time for questions. Very interesting work. Yes. Thank you for the very interesting study. I'm really curious about the last point on your your conclusion slide that the idea that quantitative measures are needed because I think the paradigm often is that we're going to use the expert uh, generalized maps as our um, you know ground truth, but the problem is there the quantity of such maps is too low to really support machine learning, and also we want to support the creation of not just one map, but in the new era, we should be able to have dynamic mapping that supports many different purposes. So I'm just curious, what are your ideas regarding quantitative evaluation of the results? Some quantitative measures, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have few ideas in this area. First of all, we want to um, look for another other measures, like for instance, measures of similarity or something like this, not only the performance measure like accuracy, precision, recall or F1. So we, we think about that. Um, so that's about quantitative uh, ones. And we also think about um, some other um, learning materials. So we know, I mean, we are aware that the, the work done by, by cartographers is subjective, but still in order to have something more up to date and something that would be like the um, standardized um, learning material, we could uh, engage cartographers, so give them some um, parts of the data, ask them to generalize it and then overlap those uh, outputs, uh, right? And come up with something more up-to-date, more objective and 
some kind um, standardized. So this is something uh, what we think about. And then we would again need some statistical measures probably to um, to come out with something that would be the mean from these uh, outputs. Yeah, this is from the quantitative side, but we also um, want to look at qualitative measures. So some user experiments with the use of cartographers again. So we cannot replace them. We, we just we are happy to have them, to grab the knowledge from them. I hope that's the Yeah, answer. thank you. Thank you. We have more questions? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I possibly ha have a follow-up question. As far as I understand you, with uh, machine learning methods, it's uh, possible to include uh, far more semantic information about uh, uh, individual settlements. But I wonder how far the contextual information could also be included, because uh, for an experienced cartographer, he or she will look around uh, if a settlement in place A has exactly the same semantic attributes as yeah, in, in another place, but they might have a different in, important ranking order. How far you consider this kind of context information? Oh yes, thank you very much for the question. It is indeed a challenge. Uh, so we want to go into the direction to have some um, contextual based solutions and some contextual based variables. And this is why we did this data enrichment. So as you um, could see, we have also considered not only the characteristics of the settlements, but also um, some density measures for the settlements and also uh, some relations to other layers. I think this is what, what you had in mind, that we have the distances to the main roads, for instance. Um, we have the distance from the airport, the distance from the railways. So this is how we, we are trying to um, in, include some context in, uh, into, into such a machine learning process so far. But we uh, already realized that's really of the key importance, especially that now I'm presenting the work that con uh, concerns the settlements. But we have also did some experiments on um, selecting roads which are of totally different nature than settlements. And then we encountered troubles with the connectivity, even if we had really sophisticated topological variables. So this is something that uh, definitely needs some further uh, research and further insights. We're trying to, to approach it from, from here, but definitely we'll th think about it in the future research as well. Great. Well, thank you. Working? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, do we have more questions? Yeah, there's yes. another one. First, thank you for the interesting presentation. I wish your work had been done about 10 years ago when I was trying to solve the same problem. The uh, one practical consideration I would add, because I didn't see it in your list of uh, enrichment variables, was the length of the name and characters, because putting names on maps actually restricts the space that you have available. So I'm curious if you've thought of that. Yeah, yes, yes, of course, we, we constantly think about it, that uh, this is uh, only one layer that we considered. Well, actually, we are considering uh, roads and rivers uh, as well, but uh, there still exist many other features on the map, right? And the um, place name that you mentioned, that I believe that's one of the most challenging uh, tasks uh, in terms of generalization. Uh, so, we didn't include that yet, uh, but by including these um, distances to the nearest neighbor and also Voronoi diagrams, we at some point, maybe just a little for now, but we uh, included uh, the distances and the density, uh, which, e which would be different uh, when you would place uh, the names. Plus, we for the learning process, we are using the fully designed maps, so the uh, the relations between objects uh, already take uh, take into account the na place names. So yeah, when we have calculate the distances and we uh, feed the models with the distance that was actually on the paper map, it should at least at some point consider that. So, but this is the only thing that we have so far. But I'm aware of that. Yes, that's a really challenging task. But for the future, I'm afraid so far. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the excellent questions and responses.
that, that was really interesting. Okay, with uh, I think time is up. Thank you, Isabella.